All right, so in this video, we're going to talk about the concept of refraction. And we're going to talk specifically about the concept of index ref of refraction. So to start with, let's talk about uh, a particular situation. So let's say you've got, um, let's say this is glass, right? And let's say this is a vacuum. Right, and so we know that when light moves from vacuum into glass, light has different speeds in each of these in each of these materials, right? So the speed of light in a vacuum, which we usually represent as C, is very, very high. It's the highest. It's the, it's the fastest thing uh, in the universe, right? The speed of light in a vacuum, right? So C. And what happens is light slows down when it reaches really anything other than a vacuum, right? Because Again, light is the fastest in a vacuum. So when it reaches glass, it's going to slow down. And what happens is when light slows down, it bends. When the light wave slows down, it bends. And so the light, in this case, when light moves from a faster medium to a slower medium, it's going to bend toward the normal, right? So it's going to bend, maybe not quite that much. It's not going to look like that. Let's, uh, I might be exaggerated a little bit, but it's, it's going to bend like that, right? It's going to bend toward the normal. And what that means is when we draw it out, we can say that this, let's use a different color, let's use this color. We could say that this is the normal, this is theta, right? And then let's keep drawing the normal. This is theta prime, right? So what we know is that when light moves from a faster medium to a slower medium, from a vacuum to glass, the, the angle relative to the normal, so theta, is going to be greater than theta prime, right? Uh, and again, the thing moves toward the normal, right, uh, when it moves into a slower medium. And the reverse would be true when light, a light ray were moving out, right? So if it were coming out like that, then it would bend this way, right? Uh, and again here, this is theta prime. And it's going to move relative to the normal, right? So again, the, uh, the angle in the slower medium is going to be smaller than the angle in the larger medium. And the angle is always measured relative to uh, entirely, exactly perpendicular to the surface, right? So, one of the ways we can measure this is with a value called the index of refraction, right? Now, the index of refraction in a vacuum, or here's, or here's how we measure index of refraction, first of all. Index of refraction is typically written as n. And the index of a refraction of a given material is equal to the, the speed of light, c, divided by the velocity of light in that medium or the speed of light c in a vacuum divided by the velocity in that medium so for example n uh what is n in a vacuum n in a vacuum is just one right because the way we would calculate that is n is equal to the speed of light in a vacuum divided by uh the velocity in in a vacuum which is still c the speed of light in a vacuum and that's equal to one Right, so we know that n in a vacuum is equal to 1, right? Uh, now, what about n, for example, in air, right? Well, it turns out that n in air, we know it's speed of light in a vacuum over the speed of light in air, right? So velocity in air. And it turns out the velocity of light in air is very, 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 very close to the speed of light in a vacuum, uh, very close to C. So the value approximates to 1. Really, because velocity in air is a tiny bit slower, it would be like one point. 0001, something like that. But we just approximate it to about 1, right? So n in, in air is still 1, more or less, right? But there are other materials where the this value changes quite significantly, where n is uh, it's quite a bit higher, right? So for example, n in, let's say, let's say glass, right? Or actually, let's say, let's say water, n in water, is not going to be one, right? And we one of the ways we know that is if you've ever seen uh, a glass of water and you've ever like, say, put a straw in water, the straw appears to bend, right? 
Let's draw up here to do this. Or um, if you've ever gone fishing, uh, people who try to go fishing try to spear fish with a, with a spear. Uh, it's very, very hard because the refraction uh, caused by the, the water makes the fish appear. So if you're looking, say this is the water, right? You're looking down at a fish. And you, your eyes, your eyes are, let's say, this is your eye. Uh, this is a very bad eye. Uh, your eyes looking down. Well, because the light is bent, because the light rays are all bending, right? You're gonna you're gonna think the fish is is uh, say here, but the fish might actually be here, right? Uh, and so it confuses your your uh, your eyes, right? And so that if you've ever people who go spear fishing, they try to spear, they'll try and spear fish. Person will try and spear the fish when it's here thinking it's here, but it's actually way further out. Um, so anyway, so we know that the, that water, the point is water refracts light relative to, uh, relative to air. And it turns out that the N, the index of refraction in water, is about equal to 1.33, right? And what that means is that this is equal to speed of light in a vacuum divided by the speed of light in water, right? Uh, another example and in, of glass is approximately equal to 1.5, right? And, and uh, again, these values are going to vary. So different types of glass will have different indice indices of, reflect, of refraction. Uh, but these are just rough values, right? And the important thing is to realize that index of refraction uh, is always greater than 1 because nothing can ever have a speed greater than the speed of light in a vacuum, right? So index of refraction is always greater than 1. Um, and it tells us the angle of, uh, and it tells us the angle relative to the normal. The higher the index of refraction, so let me write that out, higher index of, where is this? Fraction means we have a, uh, we have a greater refraction, which means a smaller angle relative to normal, right? And so the last point I have to make is we're always talking about the angle relative to normal. What happens if light hits our uh, our surface directly perpendicularly at the exact normal. So what happens if the angle is already zero? Right. Well, it turns out if the angle is already zero, there is no refraction. It turns out the thing just keeps going, right? And that's because the angle can't, the light can't really be refracted any more than it already is, right? And so uh, it would still be, it would be uh, the same angle. So theta, which is equal to zero, is equal to theta prime, which is still zero. And the last point to make is that there is an equation that relates these angles also. Uh, so as we talked about here, let me go to this area over here. As we talked about here, we talked about how uh, the angle changes, right? And the, angle, the equation that relates that is the n, which is the index of refraction. Let me fix the way I wrote that. Actually, let's write it in a different color. Um, so n times the sine, or let's say n times, yeah, n times the sine of theta is equal to n prime sine theta prime, right? And uh, this equation just really just tells us, uh, it tells us that, that these things, uh, the relationship between these variables, right? So as n increases, sine of theta decreases, or that means that theta has to decrease, uh, and vice versa, right? Um, so this is just something to, to be aware of. Uh, in general, the MCAT will rarely ask us to use this equation, mainly because um, obviously we don't have a calculator, so we don't typically get, uh, we're not typically asked to do signs on the MCAT. Uh, but being aware of the theory of this equation uh, is important, uh, if only to help you um, be aware that the, which way the angle changes, that um, in general, when the index of refraction is higher, um, 
the theta is going to be lower. And theta is always, lastly, last point to, to make, theta is always measured relative to the normal, not relative to the surface. It's relative to normal. And that's what we should know about index of refraction and uh, refraction in general for the MCAT.